प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी फलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह गणेशम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Buddha Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, Apurujya dear Guruji, Puja Santo, Bhagat, and all of you Hari Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. Last uh, Katha we had, You Are Course 1, where we uh, completed and listened to Ajmara Ordere Pad 3. In this course, we would like to first listen to and then dissect Pad 4 and then go on to Swami Nivato and then Sri Jimaraj's Charitra. Pad 4 Vadi sahu sambaro re mari varta paramanup param siddhanta chere saune hitakari sukharup Sauhari bhakta nere Jau hoye mare dham Tomane seva jore Tame sudabhave thai niskam Sauhari bhakta nere Reo hoye mare pas Totame mela jore Mithya pancha vishaini asha mujavina jana jore Bija maik so akar, preeti tod jore, jutha jani kutum parivar, so to me pard jore, sarve drad karimaraniam, tamper a rege sere, dharmane bhakti karsheshen, a santahari bhaktanere. Dido shikshano upadesh latka hath nare Karta shobe natvaravesh nijjana uparere Amruta varshayanan kand jemsa ausadire Prite poshe puran chand shobe santamare Jem kai ud ganan ma ud raja ishwara uday thayare Kalima karva janana kaj He pad seek sere Ghaase saambad se kari pyaar Premanand nore Swami le se te ni saad Premanand nore Swami le se te ni saar This is the Pad 4 or the fourth stanza of Ajmara Orde. Last week we understood the whole story behind how this whole, uh, all these, all these uh, stanza, stanzas were created. In short, Sadhguru Preman Swami had a niyam of writing four stanzas every day before going to sleep. Uh, he finished two stanzas and he fell asleep. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself came and wrote the other two stanzas. Uh, the third stanza we reviewed last week, and today is the fourth stanza, for, uh, the Pad 4. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan in this is saying that, here, uh, listen to uh, more of my words, what I am saying. They're for your own good, and they are the principles, and they are for your benefit. All of you who want to go to my Akshradam, please serve me with Niskam Bhav or Selfless Bhav. There's two kinds of Bhavs or you can say uh, ways we can worship God. One is Niskam and the other one is Sakam. Sakam is where we have some kind of expectation that we want to meet from God. 
that's why we do his bhakti seva etc so on and so forth if we do it bhagwan will for example if i do five maras bhagwan will give me an a plus on my exam tomorrow morning that is something that has to do with expectations if i take a niyam in chaturmas to do 25 dunwards every day then bhagwan will give me a high score on my mcats this is an expectation as well such kind of expectations may be on a smaller scale for students and other bigger skills that Maharaj, if, if I give up eating Dungri and Lassan, then you will give me a big business and uh, I will become rich. Such kind of expectations is called Sakam Bhakti. And on the other hand, Niskam Bhakti is pretty much not expecting anything from Bhagwan or his Satpurush or his Santo, nothing at all. Just for the very reason of making them Raji. The Satpur or Maharaj becomes a Raji, Satpurush becomes a Raji. That's why we do bhakti, any type of bhakti. That's why we do seva. Even if we do bhakti, we are we are binded in a very tough and adverse circumstance. That's all to all due to Bhagwan's wish. But a Niskam Bhakt never asks to remove his or her pain. An Iskam Bhakta always wishes for the Rajipo of Bhagwan. And according to the Vachnamrut Gurdara, last chapter 13th, whatever Bhagwan's preference is, that, that is what I want to make my preference. That's the type of intention Bhagwan Swaminarayan expects from us. And that's the kind of understanding he expects from us as well. So as an Iskam Bhakta, Maharaj is saying, that those who want to go to my dham serve me with a niskam bhav. So ari bhaktanere reu hoi mare pas. Those who want to stay with me. To tame mel jo mithya panchu shenyash. Those who want to stay with me, please let go, forsake, abandon the ash or the desire of the false bunch vishes bunch vishes are you can say there's five types of senses that everyone knows of from these five senses we can say sight smell taste touch and hear from these five senses we are able to indulge in and experience the world if we ate a donut we can experience the sweetness and how creamy it is if we go into the water we experience the coolness if we wear nice clothes then we experience some kind of you know we are something in this society so on and so forth bunch wishes are everything in this world that is developed uh, from materialism or not from materialism but in short Though that is what is distraction from worshipping you, worshipping Bhagwan between you and Bhagwan. That that wall is panchvishes. Now Bhagwan is saying these panchvishes are mithya, meaning they are false. They are not going to last. Those who have become millionaires and billionaires in the even right now, they are very very sad. They're very, very depressed. Why is that? Why are they not having the best time of their life? May it seem, or may they show that they're having the time of their life. But if you look inside of their heart, if you look inside of their mind, then they're very, very miserable and they want to seek happiness. Then is true happiness really in the Panchvishes? That's a question. Sometimes, you know, we live in society and uh, there's always some kind of technology craze that's going on. Before it was the iPod, now the iPhone, the iPads, or other technology. And 
we see in school that you know people are using it and off of that we feel like we should also you know get something like this if not we have uh, we would uh, take extreme measures to get something like this but these kinds of crazes are bunch of shades that we are trying to get and from there we feel that it's we feel that we will become happy now here's what happens suppose we do get that $400 iPad or $500 iPad and we use it for one or two years we find out that there is a new and better version of the iPad out now and we see that everyone in school has it so what happens again we again take extreme measures beg to our parents etc so on and so forth to pretty much you know tell them that you know we want these bunch we shade or we want this iPad we want to obtain it and we want to uh, pretty much you know um, uh, get it for our use now that item that two years ago that we crazed for we get receive and two years later when a new version a new model comes out we again beg and plead for it then what happened to the older one meaning it's only temporary happiness and we only satisfy our mind until we find something that is better and Bhagwan is saying here that those who want to stay with me now one statement is Bhagwan is saying those who want to stay with me so Bhagwan has a house yes Bhagwan has a house we can say Bhagwan has a mansion mansion in the form of his abode akshradham now <clears throat> if a person wants to stay with us if we want to stay with that person then at least 80 90 95 99 percent of our liking should be with the other person that's the only way one can happily live with one another here Bhagwan does not like the panchvishes at all he is completely and we can see according to the vachnamrut According to Bhagwan Swami Narayan's life, when he was traveling as Nilkandrani, how much tyag and vairagya he had for the Panchvishes, just for the sake of our liberation, our benefit. But nonetheless, an inclination that he displayed here on this earth, what does that show? What does that prove to us? That if Bhagwan likes this, then we should also have the same kind of liking. And if we develop the same kind of liking, that's the only way that we can go to Akshradham and stay there. We might be go to we might be able to go to Akshradham, but we will not be able to stay there because suppose we are there with Bhagwan and we are we are looking at Bhagwan, Bhagwan is looking at us, and we develop a thought of, oh, I wish, you know, I I wonder on earth what is the latest car out right now. I wish I could drive that. These kinds of false thoughts false desires will bring that person down from akshradham and will have to take a new life just for the desire of such kind of a mundane object that's why bhagwan is saying completely destroy the desire for all these false panchvishes so that you can live with me happily without any kind of problems Look at how much Bhagwan is compassionate upon us that he is showing us the path, the ultimate path, locking us down for Akshradham, showing us his tricks and techniques on how to go to Akshradham, which is to serve Bhagwan with the Niskam Bhav, and how to stay in Akshradham, which, to, which is to forsake and completely falsify the Panchvishes. Bhagwan is so compassionate that he is giving us a technique a guide you can say a guide for dummies that you know we will be able to live there and go there without any kind of problems so if bhagwan is giving us all this then we should utilize his message into our life imply it into our life and and achieve his akshra dham our ultimate goal mujhvina jan jore bija maik sawakar प्रीति तोड़ जोरे जूठा जानी कुटुंब परिवार मुझे भी न जान जोरे बीजा माइक सोकर एवरीथिंग बिसाइड्स माय फॉर्म इज माइक और यू कैन से फॉल्स 
break the affection you have for jutha jani kutum parivar the false family relations we believe that we have right now according to the vachanarud grida first chapter 21 bhagwan swami narayan says that this this there is 8.4 million types of species on this earth and this jeev this soul has taken as many lives that it can make combinations of everything may it be species may it be humans we have become the sons of others we have become the daughters of others we have become the fathers of others there's so many countless combinations and due to that this cycle of life and death we are still continuing in this life and death cycle if we want to get out of this life of life and death then understand this kutum parivar this family that we think this is my mom this is my dad this is my son this is my sister this is so on and so forth to be false because they're only here for a short span of time until 60 70 80 years and then what will they come with you will you remember them will they remember you if if a soul genuinely sits and thinks on this perspective of bhagwan swami narayan on this principle of bhagwan swami narayan automatically he would develop vairagya or non attachment for those who he calls family brother sister etc so on and so forth but if one does not think one does not contemplate then just like how the souls of just like how the people of this world are just roaming and believing oh my mother died my father died and my sister died and my dog died and so on and so forth they soak and and, and pretty much they weep for a couple of days couple of weeks and then the years go on everyone is forgotten and they go back to their habitual life of partying and social life and and spending money and going to work and going to school and so on and so forth but what after this what is there anything beyond bhagwan is showing you that this is false and believe that we are your family maharaj guru ji santo bhakto accept them as our family because they will never perish bhagwan swami narayan says in the vachanamrut gudada last chapter 38 that bhagwan bhagwan's dham when he is aboard and bhagwan's mukto are avinashi meaning they are, they have no they were, they cannot be destructed or destroyed and they are forever so utam par jore sarve drad kari mara niyam the niyams and rules and regulations that i have given you in the shiksha patri not to eat this not to do this strain this do this do puja so on and so forth all these rules and regulations make sure to follow them with a very very firm mindset bhagwan wants us to do this because it's obviously if you want to go somewhere if you want to achieve someone's rajipo you do exactly as they're liking and we want to do that so we want to follow according to bhagwan's wish we want to attain bhagwan's happiness that's why we want to follow his rules that is the only reason why we want to follow his rules because we want to attain his rajipo we want to attain his blessings and think about it in the world people may give us blessings people may give us you know some kind of good showers but what how long will that last and according in comparison to that bhagwan swami narayan his ekantik satpurush santo bhakto gives us blessings how long will they, that last how much change develops in our life through their blessings and rajipo that's only something to experience not to be said tame tam pan rit chere dharma ne bhakti kar shishen bhagwan will become happy on you dharma ne bhakti will become happy on you santri bhakt ne re dido shiksha no updesh natka hath na re karta shobhe natavra vesh i have given you this updesh meaning i have given you 
uh, my message, my teachings, you can say, to all of you, so uh, all the santo and bhakto. So listen. Nijan uparere amrut varshaya anandkan jemsa o sadire prite posha puran chand. Meaning, I have given you uh, these kinds of blessings, uh, like the, which are in the form of amrut. Shobhe sant mare jem kai urgana ma udrai ishoyode thare karima karva janna kaj. Epad sikhsere gase sambrse karpyar premanandore swami lese teni sar. Bhagwan Swami Narayan says at the end again puts Sadguru Premanand Swami's name, hides his hides his name. But obviously Premanand Swami spread the word that Bhagwan had wrote this and now it's something that is very, very famous in our Sampradaya here. And Bhagwan graced us with his two pads, his Vachnamrut, Swamini Vato, so on and so forth. And we from there can know his intentions his principles and from there we can attain his rajipo and his akshradham moving on to sadguru shri gunatitan and swamini vato prakran 1 vat 103 how can one check to find out that one perceives no human traits in the great sadhu meaning the god realized sadhu first let's dissect the question how can one check to find out that one perceives no human traits in God, in in the great sadhu? Perceiving human traits, what does that mean? Well, you know, first let's take a worldly example so you can kind of fit it into your head. Worldly traits, we can say, or human traits is, this guy sleeps too much, he eats too much. He is always talking so much. These are human traits. Humans possess such kind of traits where others, when they look at them, they only look at these traits. They cannot see the virtues. They cannot go deeper inside of the Atma, the soul, and see the virtues, the good virtues of how, how much affection this person has, how caring this person is how kind this person is these are just worldly traits i'm talking about in the same way when bhagwan or his ikantik satpurush his god realized sadhu is on this earth here people have are and will in the future develop some kind of human traits human traits meaning you call this Bhagwan? Look at how much tasty food he's eating. Bhagwan doesn't sleep. Bhagwan has a broken broken leg? That's not possible. All these are human traits. Doubts in God. How can one check to find out? In the same way with the Satpurush. The Satpurush, God realized Sadhu here. Amongst us are Puja Guruji. He is the one who is here. And he's he's uh, here. And he is pretty much here and giving us darshan. And we see him. Guruji, look at him. He's always sitting on a sofa. He's always eating. He's always sleeping. Guruji may not be even doing all these things. He is just living a normal life. But the soul is so insignificant so dumb so you can say not knowledgeable that it perceives human traits in the Satpurush now the question is how can one check to find out that one perceives no human traits in the Sadhu the answer seeing no fault in any of his actions is to see divinity now, obviously, the Satpurush is doing everything like what we see, what we think. But seeing that he is divine, he is not of this earth. He is here giving us darshan, yet he is in Akshardham with Bhagwan's Murti. He is always divine. Every action, every minute action that he is performing, that is all Bhagwan himself performing that from Guruji, from inside of Guruji. 
thinking in this fashion every second of the way while having the darshan of the Satpurush, while looking at him, while talking with him, while perceiving every action, there is no way one would able one would be able to see any faults. So but Swami says, seeing no faults, what is not how can one not see any faults? To understand that this Satpurush is from Akshardham, he is constantly with Bhagwan Swaminarayan, he has a constant relationship with Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Such kind of thoughts will keep one maintained and in the range of the Satpurush. And when that occurs, then his Satpurush finds out the Satpurush finds out that this Jeev is making an effort to understand my actions. And that Satpurush becomes a Raji on that Jeev. And due to that, that Jew also becomes nirdos or without any kind of faults as well. Just like how the Satpurush has no faults, the Jew also becomes nirdos due to perceiving the Satpurush as nirdos or without any faults. Let me give you an example. When we see a baby, six month old baby, one year old baby, do we ever think in our mind that this baby must have many many bad thoughts must have desires of many many bad things women alcohol drugs meat so on and so forth will we ever think that even for the slightest second no not even for the slightest second then the sadhu the satpurush who is constantly in the connection with Bhagwan Swami Narayan, who is constantly in contact with Bhagwan Swami, who is talking face to face with Bhagwan Swami Narayan, just like how we have a conversation with our friend. Such kind of Satpurush, how can we perceive him to have faults? If we do not perceive a six month old baby to have faults, how can we compare or understand? The Satpurush who has constant relationship with God to have faults. There is no way. And if the Satpurush did have faults, why do his why do thousands of disciples follow him and and they worship God and through worshiping God they attain Akshardham? How is it possible? It's it can't be. It doesn't match. There is no formula that can match that. But in reality, the Satpurush is nirdos, he does not have any faults, and by looking at that, perceiving him as divine, perceiving him as as he is from Akshradam, he is not from here. His body may look like a human, but in reality, his body is also divine. He is from Akshradam, and he is constantly in relation with Bhagwan. Then there is no way one can perceive any kind of false you can say or faults and, and when one for a long period of time understands the Satpurush as Nirdos he himself becomes Nirdos and also one with God and finally the Charitra is of Naja Jogya the PDF you'll be able to receive in the groups of WhatsApp also if anyone does not get the course you can email us at loyadamnj at gmail.com nonetheless our last message uh, for those who are Youth Sibir participants, uh, this year marks the 10th anniversary of our Youth Sibir program, which was initiated by our Puja Guruji in 2011. This year it's held from July 9th to July 12th in the Poconos um, and resort, and uh, everyone is welcome and most invited. Uh, you'll be able to register on our website, theswaminarayan.org. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami